you have this little screw that should be also the standoff there. This one fits in the standoff and it's five, size five. It's a size five. This is the screw for the NVMe, don't lose this. But if you did lose this, then you can find it. I have links in the description, but you can buy these kits usually on Amazon. Size five socket. So that's the standoff. It's a hex. It's a hex. So easy to lose this thing. They will go like this, the standoff and the screw. These you find them separate, they will not be most of the time with the motherboard. But if you had them at the beginning with the motherboard when you install it, make sure that you actually install this in the motherboard if you, even if you don't use NVMe. So I'll remove the screw. Hope I don't lose it now. Okay. First install the standoff. You can bring it in. Use the socket. Not too tight. Very little pressure. This is the J0 size. This is the size J0, but I think anything should work. You have to put the standoff at the right screw. You could put it here or here or there. Because there are multiple sizes. It depends on how long the SSD is. And this is the place where the screw goes. So I take the NVMe drive. I take the full drive. Notice where the notch is. That's the notch. And also notice there's a notch on the connector. A bit of an angle. And then slice down. Take the NVMe screw and put it on the screwdriver. It really helps to have a magnetic screwdriver with this. Hopefully this one will not make any problems. And that's all. Put back the graphics card. It's installed right there and the other the system drive is there. So that's the thing I was lifting with the spatula too. You want to press this and then get the till picks. There should be a click. Get the screws back in. Don't forget to connect the power back. The power back to the graphics card. Power connector inserted all the way. So it's all good. I'll leave the SSD in there and do a speed test and check the speed, the temperature and how it performs. And afterwards, I'll install the M2 Pro Arctic to see if there's any difference. I'm doing this for you so you see the difference between with the cooler and without the cooler. And I, I wanted to get the version with the cooler, with the heatsink of this NVMe, the Crucial T500 Pro, but it was sold out on Amazon. I had it in the car, but by the time I decided to buy it, it was already sold out. So I got this extra cooler and we'll see now if there's any difference. I'm really thinking there's going to be at least 5 10 degrees difference between the cooler and no cooler. The hardest thing for the NVMe is to do large file transfers with that high speed for a long time. If it's many small files, it really doesn't have a problem even without the cooler. But 